It seems like the NASCAR gods have heard our prayers. We're going to see the Kiwi race in NASCAR as a full-time driver from 2024 onward. And this time, he means business, as he is set on leaving the Supercars Championship and focusing entirely on building a NASCAR career. With many teams having enormous interest in the services of Shane, while many doubted that one race could make the difference, it turned out that the Chicago downtown race has turned his life around, but for the better. So where will Shane land? And does he have the mindset of winning the championship on his first try? Many NASCAR fans were baffled when they saw the great emergence of Shane Van Gisbergen during Chicago's street race. Because this was a race that was supposed to be the heaviest challenge for any driver out there, let alone a rookie in NASCAR. Having won the Supercars Championship in Australia three times, Shane didn't come as a guy who had no idea how to drive stock cars, but considering the fact that he fought head-to-head -head against some of the toughest crowds you could possibly imagine and exited the race as a winner, you cannot help but praise that performance. And it's not just us. Many NASCAR drivers have labeled him as the greatest athlete of all time and said that he made them look like rookies and amateurs, while everybody expected it to be the other way around. Be that as it may, there were initial rumors about Shane joining NASCAR sooner rather than later with the first opportunity opening late 2023 or early 2024. And with this confirmation that he will have a talk with his current team, Triple Eight, in the Supercars Championship, everything is slowly but surely unfolding as it should. His current team manager, Jamie Wincup, one that is not supposed to hold Shane back from achieving his dreams, spoke about this entire situation as he went on to elaborate. There's not much for me to do until he says, hey, I really want to go back to the US, but he hasn't made the call yet. I think he'll make that shortly, and once he makes that call, then I'll start the process of working out who goes in that car. We're looking around. I wish I wasn't. I had both drivers contracted to 2024, but there could be curveball there. There's nothing more to add than what we already know. It is what it is. While Jamie said this with a bittersweet note in his voice, it's more than obvious that he is super happy that the driver with whom he won three championships in the Supercar Championship is now destined for something much greater, and Shane's latest move? could see NASCAR's boost become an ever greater one as well. For example, there is a huge opportunity for Red Bull to enter NASCAR through a big door, and if they are to do so, then the revenue of the sport as well as the sponsorship of the team that will choose Shane will go through the roof. And the stats speak for themselves. Shane became the first driver to win a race on his debut in the last 60 years, and at the age of 34, I don't think there's too much to think about regarding this decision. The number 91 Chevrolet, which is part of the Trackhouse project, ignited a flurry of comments and anticipation regarding the Kiwi's intervention into NASCAR, and there have been rumors about Red Bull making a return to the sport. However, everything sounds too good to be true at this moment, and it seems like the drinks company will have an ultimatum for the 34-year-old before he agrees to any kind of agreement with his future team in the sport. But nonetheless, we must not take our eyes away from the next big thing, Shane Van Gisbergen in NASCAR. And although many are very excited to see this scenario happen in 2023, it seems like we're going to have to wait for the upcoming season. Shane himself has confirmed that he intends to sign a contract as a full-time driver in NASCAR, and it seems like the praise that he received from drivers like Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin didn't go unnoticed by the rest of the grid. But which team would get the most out of his services? When talking about his foreseeable future, Shane went on to say, There's a lot happening in the background. I'm not leaving because of this team. I love this team, and when I leave, I want to make sure there is someone here to replace me that's going to do a good job in the car. You don't want to leave the team with nothing, scrambling to find someone. I want to leave the team in a good spot. Hopefully, the team has someone soon. Obviously, he's showing how grateful of a human being he is right now, and one couldn't help but admire his greatness as a driver, but could this actually be the obstacle that will prevent him from joining NASCAR? According to Shane, if Triple Eight fails to find a driver who they believe will have the capacity to replace him in the Supercar Championship, then his dream of driving in NASCAR would be hindered, and he would have to spend one more year in Australia before he is to sign a contract with any team in the USA's competition, or even more. Therefore, there is a high chance that this answer from Shane is just a diplomatic one, and I doubt that he would not look out for himself a little bit in these situations, as they do not come up that often. Sure, starting a NASCAR career at the age of 34 might be a bit challenging, but that doesn't mean it's impossible, and if there is someone who has proven that age is just a number, it's surely Shane. 
But as humble as he is, Shane understands that the magnitude of his move will have some consequences on his confidence to drive. And when we're talking about his move from supercars straight up to the Cup Series, he wasn't shy to admit that he is afraid of the challenge as he elaborated. When I study it, Marcos Ambrose did three years before he went to Cup full-time. Montoya was pretty much a full season as well. Nobody has ever gone into Cup, and I have no illusion that those ovals are going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of time to learn. I don't have a plan. Hopefully, I'll work it out when I'm over there. If you think about it, this might be the best solution for Shane because age has never been a restricting factor when it comes to winning races in the Cup Series in NASCAR. For example, we see that Kevin Harvick is going to retire from the sport at the age of 45, and there were some drivers who were well into their 40s and still going strong at it, such as Martin Trow Jr., Danny Hamlin, and Kurt Busch, with the latter one having to retire after concussion-like symptoms preventing him from racing in NASCAR. But this is a double-edged sword, and it seems like Shane is walking on thin ice here because all the drivers that we mentioned have massive experience in the Cup Series, and they haven't started their season well in their 30s. Sure, everyone who comes at the age of Shane in the sport does have previous experience in other series, but nothing can prepare you for the real deal, even though the race win in Chicago might prove otherwise. Hamlin was full of praise for Shane, and when talking about his immense ability to put everyone in their place on a venue that was challenging for the best NASCAR drivers out there, the JGR driver went on to elaborate. Do you know what? Crown him. The greatest effing athlete in the history of sports. I mean, he went from the one side of the car to the other. I did that when I went to Japan for Toyota, and I ran a GT3 car. It took me forever to get comfortable driving from the other side of the car. It's just different. It's just way different. Holy cow. We're trying to make a point one way or another here. It's like everywhere you turn, it's pretty amazing what he did. Obviously, everybody knows that the challenge is different when you're going in the ovals. And although the street circuit in Chicago is definitely a bigger challenge to tackle, you can never take off the possibility of Shane having one race luck and hitting a gold pot in his debut. Be that as it may, there is certainly no doubt that his future is with NASCAR, and we would be more than delighted to see the Kiwi drive for any of the teams in 2024, potentially the ones that could offer him a legitimate chance to win the championship or at least be in contention in his first year. What do you think about Van Gisbergen's chance of joining NASCAR? And more importantly, which team do you think will place the highest bet for the Kiwi's services? Let us know in the comments below.